listen to the podcast. Just search for Hancock and Kelly. Well, former President Donald Trump predicted that he would be arrested this past Tuesday. That led to preparations for potentially unruly protests in New York and Washington. He blasted all of the ongoing investigations in which he is the target. Whether it's the Mar-a-Lago raid or the unselect committee hoax, the perfect Georgia phone call it was absolutely perfect, or the stormy horse-faced Daniels extortion plot, they're all sick, and it's fake news. Mr. Trump expected to be indicted and arrested in connection with the investigation into a 2016 payment to adult film actress Stormy Daniels as part of a non-disclosure agreement. He's been relentlessly going after Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg on social media, raising the specter of death and destruction should he be indicted. He even reposted a photo of himself holding a baseball bat next to a photo of Bragg. Michael, your thoughts on what is widely seen as a political prosecution, a weak legal case in terms of the Stormy Daniels thing, and Mr. Trump's response to it all. We've never heard anything from the attorney or from the prosecutor up in Manhattan that he's going to be prosecuting. All this information's come from Donald Trump, a known liar. Whether or not he's going to be prosecuted with a misdemeanor or felony is still to be seen. Uh, having said that, the Republicans have always prided themselves on the, being the party of law and order. They wanted to see John Edwards prosecuted for these same crimes. And now they've decided, no, we want to look the other way on certain laws. Why should a president have any different standing than any other American out there? John, same question. Prosecutors have discretion. And in this case, in the Stormy Daniels case, the prosecutor's discretion should say this is not, a, this is not the hill to die on. There are substantial cases going on in Georgia and certainly in the Justice Department. What we learned this week uh, about the documents effort where the president's lawyer, where the lawyer uh, attorney client privilege was pierced by the court, by the district court and a three judge appellate panel requiring Trump's lawyer to testify, which happened last Friday, that's a big deal. Uh, this case was Stormy Daniels. The FEC, the Federal Elections Commission passed on it. Uh, Bragg's predecessor, Cy Vance, passed on it. The Justice Department passed on it. And for good reason, uh, it, it's not a strong case. But what about him raising the specter? You know, indict me and there's going to be death and destruction. Why would you do that? Is not, that not right? Troublesome at all? Yeah, it's troublesome. He, he's a madman. And it's a shame that he was ever even president of the United States. But unfortunately, that type of language appeals to a growing base inside the Republican Party, which should make us all very nervous. I don't know that it's growing. Uh, but it's substantial. Now to our quote of the week. It comes from Chinese President Xi Jinping's trip to Moscow to meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin. The two presented a united front as they discussed a path to peace in Ukraine. Putin says relations between the countries, China and Russia, has never been higher. Russia is now China's top oil supplier. And in our quote, the Chinese president says, the relations between our nations go way beyond ourselves they are crucial to the world order and mankind's future destiny. Mankind's future destiny. Should that kind of talk worry us here in the United States, John? Heck yeah. Uh, and all the more reason, by the way, why it is prudent policy for the United States to arm and support the Ukrainian resistance to the Russian invasion. What's happening between Russia and China, that alliance, and throw Iran into that mix as well, uh, ought to be... Uh, chilling for all of us. The United States, as the world's preeminent superpower, uh, is really being threatened for the first time since the Cold War. And this is a very unstable situation that's happening over here with two authoritarian thugs. And uh, we better all pay attention and we better keep supporting Ukraine. There are isolationists in Congress, though, and when he brings up Ukraine and our support, who say, no, 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 we're doing too much. Well, unfortunately, they're all Republicans, and they're the ones who are saying that we should maybe be supporting Vladimir Putin. Some of them, it, I don't understand it. John and I are together when it comes to supporting this. What people should read in that quote was, they're talking about authoritarian re regimes running the world as opposed to the freedom of the West. And that is truly what this is all about. These are the two other larger superpowers on the planet. If they unite and they are going to push forward their narrative of the way the world should go, our freedoms evaporate. Still to come on Hancock and Kelly, pot is legal in Missouri, so why is St. Louis County now in the weeds about restricting and taxing marijuana? 